Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da Habata fillah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Fi kitabi al-kareem Wa ma khalaqtu al-jinn wa l-insil illi abudun I've not created mankind and the jinn except for the purpose of worshipping me. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes clear the purpose of creation. That our sole purpose, if we can actualize and if we can realize and if we can implement in our lives and remember and recall ourselves and recall the creation and remind the creation to worship Allah Azza wa Jal, then we're actualizing our purpose. And that is the goal. That is the divine purpose. So whenever you get sidetracked, whenever you get or find some distortion in your life or someone gives you a new distorted purpose, realize and remember that your purpose is to worship Allah. Remember that ayat. Imam Ibn Kathir, he said about... Uh, this, or uh, one of the ayat of Tawheed, he said, basically, that is the dalil ala annuhu mustahik lil ibadah. Akhalik li hadihi al asha huwa mustahik lil ibadah. Ibn Kathir, he mentioned when about the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about the creation that he has created from his ayat, and from his signs is the uh, shams, the sun, and the moon. And do not worship the shams, the sun, and the, and the moon. But worship Allah, Allah, the, the one who created those things, if it is Him you truly worship, letting us know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as uh, Imam Ibn Kathir said, the creator of that, those things, He is fully the only one worthy of worship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمُ قَضَى رَبُّكَ لَا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا and your Lord has ordered you or commanded you to worship none other except Him. No, to worship none except Him. And to your parents be righteous. So that lets us know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, along with creating us to worship Him and Him alone, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions along with his haq, with his right to be worshipped alone and by commanding us, he also commanded us with the right of our parents, which is being righteous. So it shows us, it's imperative, regardless of whether your parents are Muslim or not, give them their rights, be respectful, show them the kindest of treatment, be the most obedient except for in disobedience to Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولٍ إِنْ نِعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُ تَعْبُودِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ that we have sent, لَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولٍ And we have sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone and avoid the ta'ghut, those things worship besides Allah Azza wa Jal. So it lets us know again, ta'zim Allah, that tawheed is, is, is what we are commanded with, what our divine purpose is, and we can practice that through the various acts of worship and devoting our worship and following the minhaj of the MBL, letting us know that who? The NBA, all the prophets, alayhim afdhu salatu salam, they were commanded with worshiping Allah alone. So this is what they shared. And they were, they were commanded to avoid the ta'gut, be away from the ta'gut, those things worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether it be the shaitan, whether it be men, whether it be statues, whether it be jinn, whether it be all the other wicked 
and other things to be worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who al The worship goes only to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, وَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and worship Allah and do not associate partners with him. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayat, he began with what? A command. And we already know al-amr yafid al-wujub that whenever there's a command that this means the asl of that, the origin of that command is that it necessitates uh, that this thing is an obligation. If Allah commands something in the Quran, it's an obligation. That's the foundation. Unless other evidence comes from the Quran or the Sunnah to show that it is no longer an obligation, that it is recommended or otherwise. And the opposite of that qa'ida, or in addition to that qa'ida or principle, is that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibits something, that the origin of a prohibition from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means that that is prohibited. So in this ayat, Allah, in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِشَيْهِنَ Worship Allah alone. Allah commands us what? He commands us with Tawheed. He commands us with Tawheed al ibadah to worship Him and Him alone. And then what does He do? So there is a, a command in this ayat to worship Allah, which is an affirmation. And then there's a negation. There's, we call it, إِثْبَاتْ nafi. There's an affirmation in the first part of the ayat where Allah is commanding you to do something. And then there's a nahi. There is a uh, negation or there is a, uh, you know, a prohibition attached uh, in that same ayat. وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا And do not associate partners with him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's very imperative, ahabati fillah, that we understand that the right of Allah is to worship Him and Him alone. And the best way to do that is by following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he, who, who are you he performed tawheed in perfection. It's his sunnah that we're ordered to follow. And obey Allah and obey his messenger. And in a beautiful hadith, and I don't want to continue and be too long. A beautiful hadith, the hadith of Mu'adh al Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal, Kuntu radith al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala himar, faqal, ya Mu'adh, tadri ma haqa Allah alayhi ibadi wa ma haqa li ibadi Allah kultu. Allah wa Rasulullah alam qala haqqa Allah li ibadihi ya'buduhu wa la yushriku bihi shay'an wa haqqa li ibadihi Allah Allah la yu'adhdhiba min la yushriku bihi shay'an Mu'adh bin Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala an was on a donkey with the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he he uh, the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said ya Mu'adh tadri ma haqqa Allah li ibadihi oh Mu'adh do you know the right of Allah upon his servant and the right of the servant upon Allah Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala anhu out of humbleness and also, you know, humbleness and in wanting ilm. He said, Allah wa Rasulullah a'lam. Allah and his messenger know best. Then, then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the right of Allah upon his servant is to worship him and him alone and do not associate partners with him. And the right of the servant upon Allah is that he doesn't punish him if he worships him and him alone. So that lets us know again, the haq of Allah Azza wa Jal, the haq of our Creator is to worship Him and Him alone. Remember that in your prayer. Remember that in your dua. Remember that in your tawaf. Remember that in all acts of worship directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I can't help you. He can't help you. She can't help you. But Allah Azza wa Jal, your affairs can be left with Allah Azza wa Jal. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil with Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم